Hi friends, surely you have a lot of USB power sources, power banks, smartphones and so on. As we know very often, Chinese manufacturers overestimate their real output characteristics. To test them and understand what a particular device is capable of, and also find out about the capacity of the power bank without disassembling, it is enough to have a USB tester with the ability to measure the capacity and a simple load, a resistor, a light bulb, and so on. Of course, there are specialized USB electronic loads for these purposes, and they seem to be not expensive. But buying something what can be done at home isn't our way. Recently, I received a batch of power banks of various sizes and characteristics. To check their real output parameters, current and voltage will take just a few minutes. As a load, I always used a wire variable resistor. With it, can load the bank for a short time with a current of up to 2 amperes. Seems it suits almost everyone. But on one harsh winter evening, I simply had nothing to do, sat stupidly near the New Year's table, and in my mind came the thought about making an electronic load. The board worked out literally in half an hour. Another half an hour was spent on printing, transferring, etching, tinning, and drilling. This is quite a laborious process, especially if you need to make a batch of boards, so in such cases it is much more profitable to order the boards at the factory. The company GLC will produce the boards according to your drawings in just one day, with amazing quality and fast delivery. After watching the video by the link in the description, you can see the quality of the products and the scale of the GLC company. There is also a link to the website where you can order any board regardless of the complexity, size and the number of layers. As a result, a new design came into being. A very good one. I can safely recommend it for repetition. First, let's examine the main characteristics of our current electronic load. Opening voltage range from 4 to 20 volts. Range adjustment of current from 0 to 5 amperes. Depends on the resistance and power of the current shunt. Maximum rated power of 20 watts and peak short term up to 40 watts. The load doesn't require an external source. It is powered directly from the USB port, which needs to be loaded. The principle of operation of a similar load, only with much more power, I described in video stealing from the Chinese number 4. The link will be in the description. I recommend it for watching. In a few words, the operational amplifier compares the voltage formed by the reference source with the voltage of the current sensor, which is a low resistance resistor. We have the ability to forcibly change the voltage from the reference source by rotating the variable resistor. By this, we will change the balance between the inputs of the operational amplifier. In response, amplifier tries to balance the voltage between the inputs by changing its output voltage. A change in the output voltage leads to a change in the resistance of the open channel of the transistor, and therefore to a change of the current in the circuit. It is important to emphasize that this is current stabilizer and the present value of the current will not change depending on the voltage. This is very important. All these advantages make it possible to use our load to discharge batteries with stable currents in order to identify their capacity. The range of supply voltages is quite wide. The circuit can be powered up to 30 volts. But I don't advise doing this because there may be irregularities in the operation of individual units. I personally used up to 15 volts. All works okay. The maximum permissible power dissipated by the load is 40 watts, but only if there is active cooling and a rather massive radiator for the transistor. Otherwise, for short time, up to 20 watts is completely safe. For long time operation with up to 20 watts dissipation, anyway, a small fan is needed. About cooling. Because I used a dual op amp chip LM358 and the load itself was built on just one element, the second amplifier remained free. Without thinking twice on the second element, I decided to assemble a simple thermoregulator for fan speed.
thermal sensor is thermistor NTC which is pressed against the transistor radiator. If it heats up above the predetermined temperature, the fan will operate. But later I decided to completely abandon this part. It is better to solder the fan directly to the 5 volt line. It will rotate all the time. In the archive of the project, which you can download via the link in the description, there will be a board without the thermoregulator node. The fan is preferably 5 volt, but the usual 12 volt work well from 5 volt, so their use is allowed. Of course, the fan should be of a smaller size, not the one that I have. The power tracks of the printed circuit boards are heavily poured with solder. The transistor is bolted to a small heat sink. This is a pilot option. In the future, I will install a larger radiator and the whole thing will be cooled by a fan. A power transistor on which all power is dissipated in the form of heat, a field one, is good old fake IRF44. Why fake? Because now from China you can't find the original ones. Have to be satisfied with what is. But the poor guy copes in spite of the miserable crystal with the size of the end coke. I hope it is clear that the load works in a linear mode and the transistor is in very hard condition. The maximum current depends on current shunt resistance and power. I advise you to use SMD resistors 2 to 5 watts with a resistance of 0.05 to 0.1 ohm. If you don't have power resistors at hand, you can connect several pieces in parallel or use conventional resistors. And now we will load some power banks. The first sample has a capacity of only about 2000 mAh. The power supply is just one, 18, 650 battery. We connect the load via a USB measure and smoothly increase the current by rotating the variable resistor on the electronic load board. The output current of the bank is about 1 ampere. When I try to get more current, the output voltage drops sharply. The second sample is more expensive, with a capacity of 10,000 mAh. Power 4 batteries of 18650 type. We load the output in the same way. Output current about 1.2 amperes. The third sample is powered by six batteries of 18650 type. The total capacity is about 15,000 milliamperes hour. The maximum output current of 2.6 amperes. If you load even more, there will be a drawdown of the output voltage. So far, this power bank is the best that I had, as much as 2.6 amperes. This is enough to simultaneously charge two to three smartphones or tablets. As already mentioned, using such a load, you can check the output characteristics of power supplies. Here is the QC 3.0 charger. It can supply a current of up to 3 amperes. Let's check whether this is true. As you can see, the Chinese manufacturer misguided, but in our favor. The adapter produces 3.5 amperes instead of 3, and this is good news. Well, friends, this video comes to an end. In the description, you will find a link to the archive of the project with a printed circuit board in lay format, as well as links to purchase components and finished electronic loads. Please don't forget to rate this video and share with friends. And if you have questions, you can always contact our group. The link is also in the description. I have to say goodbye until we meet again. With you as always was Kasyan TV.